Hi, and welcome to I Love the Library. My name is Lisa Trana, and I'm the Public Services Supervisor here at the Detroit Lakes Library. Today, I'll be talking about some of our new books that will hopefully bring happiness and warmth to you despite our winter days. So the first book I'll be talking to you today will be The Islanders by Meg Mitchell Moore. So if you need a fun summer beach read just to keep you going through cold wintry days, look no further than this book, which takes place in Block Island and Rhode Island. Our main characters will be including Anthony Puckett, who's a rising literary star, but he's hit a couple issues and is deciding to stay on Block Island for the summer. And secondly, we have Joy Sousa, who runs and owns the beloved Whoopie Pie Cafe on this particular island. And she's worried about her business as a food truck has come in and is providing some competition towards it. And lastly, we have Lou Trisdale, who is spending her summer there and contemplating whether she should have decided to become a stay-at-home mom and watch her two kids, or if she should have continued her career. So our three characters meet, bond, share secrets, bury lies, and discover what the three things, three of them decide are the most valuable to them. Secondly, we have Strange Planet by Nathan W. Pyle. I just finished reading this book and it must, it was such a fun read. The graphic novel is sure to make you laugh and I loved how Nathan came up with unique descriptions for everyday things such as star damage for sunburn and imagine pleasant nonsense for sweet dreams. And after my dad read it as well, he and I spent the rest of the weekend coming up with unusual ways to describe everyday things, driving my mother a little nuts. <laughs> Nathan brings a sense of wonder and excitement to everyday life and how he describes our full life cycle for his planet's inhabitants. If you're a fan of fantasy, then The Warrior of Atal by George Robert Jordan will be the book for you. Robert Jordan is known for being a master of epic fantasy in his writing, the Royal Time series. This tale was actually his first ever story that he had written, but it hadn't ever been published now, till now after his death. It has been said to be similar to Jordan's Conan the Barbarian series, with a hint to the Wheel of Time series as well. In it, the main character Wolfgar is the leader of the Altala people, and his people have begun to have some problems, such as the watering holes have been drying up and also getting destroyed, the fearsome fanghorn creatures are becoming more numerous, and there have been multiple bad omens. So what is Wolfgar supposed to do as a leader of his people? Enter Elspeth, a visitor from another world, who holds all the answers for Wolfgar. However, Wolfgar first must learn what questions to ask. Draw near and listen as this tale is full of action and heroic decisions. Next we have The Almanac by Martin Bailey. In the summer of 1952, Tabitha Hart, our main character, receives a letter from her mother urging her to return home to the village of Nethre. When Tabitha finally reaches home, she discovers that her mother has died in suspicious circumstances. In an effort to attempt to find out what happened to her mother, she researches and discovers her mother's almanac. In it, there are some strange and cryptic clues that she decides to follow. Joining her, Nat Starling will be helping her figure out the clues. And will they be able to find the killer before it's too late? Will the killer be able to kill again? This book has riddles at the beginning of each chapter, which is really kind of unusual and fun, so it's sure to please any puzzle lover, mystery lover, and historians with the setting as well. And the next book I'll be talking about is From Scratch, A Memoir of Love, Sicily, and Finding Home by Tembi Locke. At age 20, Tembi Locke has found herself in Italy for study abroad. She's studying art history at Syracuse in Florida, Florence, Italy. She meets the man Sono Saro, standing in front of the store that sells the best gelato. Of course, a perfect place to start a relationship. Their love is a bit bittersweet like any love story, as Saro's family is a traditional Sicilian family who does not approve of Saro's relationship with a black American woman. So despite the resistance between Saro's family, Saro and Tembi marry and move to the States. As Saro's um, relationship grows, and unfortunately, Sorrow is diagnosed with cancer. They are able to bring healing back to his family. And after his death, Tembi is able to go to Sicily, Sicily and find comfort in her mother-in-law's food and cooking. And this book has wonderful recipes at the end. And as I was reading just a few of these pages to get a feel for the book and just what I was going to be saying about it, I got completely hooked and I'm now like halfway through the book, so I definitely plan to keep finishing reading it. 
Lastly, we'll be talking about the world's fastest man, the extraordinary life of cyclist Major Taylor, American's first black sports hero by Michael Cranish. You may know the names Jack Johnson or Jesse Owens as like famous black sports athletes, but who you may not know of is Major Taylor, who's actually considered to be the American's first black sports hero. Major Taylor made great strides in the cycling world, and covering the brilliant rise and sad decline of this character, the book shows the amount of discrimination and racial injustice that Taylor had to face. It takes place at the end of the 19th century during the Jim Crow laws, and Major Taylor is starting his career off without intention. His employer is like, hey, you should start off this race to help please our audience. You don't have to finish the full race. Before Taylor knows it, he's only got a mile left of the 10 mile race that he was just starting the race off. And he's hooked. He loves cycling. And with the aid of Bertie Munger, a legend, legendary figure in high wheeled cycling, he builds his career and is soon racing all around the world. This book offers a fascinating ride of his life and whether you're interested in cycling or not. And that concludes our wonderful things. There are just a few of the many new books that we have. We have lots of awesome ones here. Feel free to come check them out. And thank you for watching I Love the Library.